Hello friends, today we shall discuss extra widening on horizontal curves. It is a very simple topic but with a trick. Whenever a vehicle negotiates a horizontal curve, the wheel path of the front axle is not the same as the wheel path of rear axle and this is what we call the off tracking. And reason is that most of the vehicles are front wheel driven. That means when you change the angle of steering, it is only the front wheels which will turn and the rear wheels will try to follow the path of the front wheels. And because of this rigid wheel base, the front wheels of a vehicle and these are the rear wheels of a vehicle, because of this wheel base, the path taken by the rear wheel is different from the path traced by the front wheel. And this is what we call the off tracking of the wheel. This is the total road width. This is the total road width. If the front wheel follows the outer edge, the rear wheel will follow a path which is inside the outer edge. And similarly, if this wheel follows the inner edge of the road, it will go outside the pavement. Now that is extra width required. That is what we call the extra widening, this part or this part. That is extra widening required. Just to keep all vehicles on the carriageway, some extra width is provided on horizontal curve and that depends upon the speed of the vehicle and also on the sharpness of the curve. When there is no super elevation on the road, then this is the movement of two wheels, so two axles, the front axle and the rear axle. Even in case of super elevated road, the super elevation is provided for a particular design speed. But actual speed of the vehicle is never equal to design speed. It is either more than design speed or less than design speed. And therefore, super elevation provided will be either in excess or in deficit. When the speed is high, then outer wheel, the outer wheel will try to take a path which is outside the path taken by the inner wheel. Again, off tracking. The amount of off tracking as I told you depends upon the radius of the curve and speed of the vehicle. Now let us say this is the radius of the curve of the outer wheel of the front axle and this is the radius of the curve of outer wheel of rear axle and let us say this is R. So basically r minus small r is the extra widening required. That is the off tracking. That is the amount of extra widening required. And if you say let us say this center here is O and you consider this triangle OAC. OAC. OC square will be because this angle is 90 degree. So, OC square plus AC square is equal to AO square. And therefore, this OC, OC is a small r, r square plus AC is the wheelbase, L square is equal to AO is the radius of the outer wheel, the front axle, r square. And if you put r is equal to r minus w e in this equation, then this becomes r minus w e square plus l square is equal to r square. Now, if you simplify this equation, it will be that l square is equal to 2 r w e minus w e square or you can write w e 
2R minus WE. So, WE extra widening required will be L square upon 2R minus WE. WE is very small as compared to 2R. So, 2R minus WE you can write equal to the mean radius of the curve. That is the radius of the horizontal curve. 2R minus WE can be written as 2R and therefore, this will be the equation for widening which is required for off tracking of the wheels. And this widening is called the mechanical widening. Mechanical widening. There are two types of widening which are provided on a horizontal curve. One is mechanical widening, another is psychological widening. This is the equation for mechanical widening. Now, here we have assumed only a single lane movement on a single lane. If you have more than one lane, then this should be n l square upon 2l. n is the number of lanes. n is the number of lanes. So, mechanical widening will be n l square upon 2r where n in number of lane, L is the wheel base in meter, R radius of the curve in meter, W e is in meter. The psychological widening is required because when the, the overtaking occurs on a horizontal curve or when two vehicles cross each other on a horizontal curve, then there should be equal feeling of the gap between the two vehicles as it is felt on a tangent track or a tangent length. And to provide that, a psychological widening is also added to mechanical widening and that is empirically given by this equation. V upon 9.5 square root R. That is the equation, empirical equation for psychological widening. It depends upon speed. More the speed, more gap you need between the vehicles for safety reasons. And also the radius. So, total widening on a horizontal curve because of off tracking of the wheels and because of psychological reason will be equal to mechanical widening NL square upon 2R plus psychological widening V upon 9.5 square root of r. But one thing we should remember that on a single lane road, the carriageway width provided is only 3.75 meter and therefore even on a normal length of the highway, length of the road, tangent road, the crossing of the vehicles or passing of the vehicle is by making use of shoulders. So, in any case on a single lane road, in a normal case also, whenever there is a crossing of the vehicles or overtaking of the vehicle, vehicle will be using the shoulders. Same thing happens on horizontal curve also. And therefore, in a single lane road, the psychological widening is not provided. Only mechanical widening is provided. Psychological widening, psychological gap is capped by the vehicle by making use of shoulders. But in case of two lane and multi lane roads, it is NL square upon 2R plus V upon 9.5 square root of R. So, let me take one example. Let us say speed is 80 km per hour on a two lane highway where a horizontal curve is provided with a radius of 200 meter what would be the extra widening on this curve? So, the mechanical widening is n l square upon 2 r that is 2 into l, l generally we take 6 meter wheelbase 6 meter upon 2 into 200 meter. This is equal to 0.18 meter. 0.18 meter. The psychological widening is V upon 9.5 R 
v is 80 km per hour so v upon 9.5 square root of 200 and this is 0.6 meter total is 0.78 meter this should be the requirement of extra widening on a two lane highway with a design speed of 80 km per hour and radius of the curve 200 meter. Now what you can see here is that this extra widening changes with the speed and radius both whereas mechanical widening changes only with the number of lanes and there may be cases when this extra widening comes very large maybe more than 1 meter and therefore IRC 73 2023 suggest the maximum values of extra widening which should be provided on a highway or on a low category road like MDR, ODR or village roads. It says that for two lane, four lane and six lane road no extra widening is required if R is more than 300 meter. And similarly, on a single lane road or MDR, no widening is required when the radius is on a single lane road, it is more than 60 meters, or on a two lane road, it is more than 300 meters. No extra widening is required. You can see this table where the upper limit of extra widenings are suggested in IRC 70 2022 depending upon type of the road and radius of the curvature. Extra widening in field is provided by increasing the width at an approximately uniform rate along the transition curve. In case of a transition curve, this extra widening should be provided on both sides of the carriageway as far as possible. Let us say this is the normal width of the road and here you have the transition length and this is a circular length and then again transition length. So this is transition, this is transition. So in case of a normal case in plain area and super elevated road, transition is this extra widening is achieved in the transition length but it is half it is provided half on both sides of the carriageway so half half extra winding in, on the inner side and half on the outer side so this is half of the extra winding required and then full half in the full length of the road and then again it should reduce at uniform rate same is the case here we provide extra widening here and then it continues and then again it reduces to the normal width of the road. So this is the width of the road, actual width of the road through transition and through circular curve with extra widening. Now this is the extra widening, half of the extra widening, WE by 2 this side and WE by 2 this side. That is how it is achieved in field. In case there is no super elevation provided, then we use the same philosophy or same principle as we use in case of design of circular curve without transition. Means two third of the extra widening is achieved on the tangent or straight length and one third on the curve. In case of a road located in the hilly area, this total widening is provided on the inner side, that is on the hill side and we do not provide any extra widening on the valley side because of safety reasons and because of psychological reasons. And similarly when there is no transition, even in case of plain area, when curve is not provided with any transition, in that case also we provide this extra widening on one side of the pavement that is the inner side of the pavement. So that is how it is calculated and it is provided in field. 
Thank you very much for watching this video. If you have any suggestions, please write in the comment box.